Hey everyone! Someone on Reddit asked how to uh, sketch an isosceles trapezoid in on shape, and I thought I'd make a quick video showing how to do it. So we're going to do a sketch. Start our sketch here on our top plane. I'm going to try to avoid keyboard shortcuts where I can, uh, just so it's a little more clear what's going on. View normal as sketch plane. Here we go. All right, we'll zoom in. I'm going to do this off center so that we don't get any lines that are accidentally constrained to either of the other sketch planes. Uh, just so it's a little more clear how to do this wherever you might be doing it in your sketch. Okay, so first step, we're going to create a construction line. So we go up here, we turn on construction. This will make the line so that it, uh, it won't actually be extruded when you go to use this sketch anywhere. It's just for constraining the rest of the sketch geometry. And we're going to draw it here. We're going to start the line. Draw it like that. There we go. We'll hit escape to back out of that. And then we're going to go draw a second line. We're going to go like that. And we're going to hit escape. And we're going to go draw a third line over here. Doesn't, doesn't necessarily need to be aligned to the other line at this point. There we go. We'll hit escape to back out of that. And now we're going to go over here, we're going to click on that point and this line, and we're going to go add a midpoint constraint, and that will put that point at the center of that line. So we'll go over here and find midpoint in the menu. We'll click on that. There we go. And now we're going to do the same thing over here. And you'll note that since we clicked on midpoint, uh, that was the last thing we used in this menu, that now shows up right here. And so we can just click on it. There we go. And all that's left is to go at, click on line, connect a line from there to there, and then connect a line from there to there. We'll hit escape to back out of that. And now at that point, we have our isosceles trapezoid. There we go. Uh, now, one interesting thing, since we drew these lines vertical and horizontal with respect to the base plane down here, we can't rotate the trapezoid. So for example, if we went up here and hit dimension, and we clicked on this line, and then we clicked on this line down here, and by clicking on lines that are not parallel to each other, that flips the dimension tool into allowing us to specify the angle between two lines instead of, say, the distance between those lines. And we'll click here, and we'll say that we're going to put this at, I don't know, 80 degrees, and we're going to get this error saying, hey, wait a sec, this, this line is set to be vertical, but you just said you wanted this to be an angle that's not 90 degrees. That isn't going to work. I can't do that. So what we need to do instead is click on this line and or hover over it, and you'll see that you can see the constraints that are applied to that line. So this one's saying, hey, there's the, the midpoint constraint constraining this line to be on the midpoint. That's the one we added, as well as this implicit vertical constraint that was added when we drew the line vertically. And so we're going to hover over it, and we're going to get rid of that vertical constraint. Just click on it once, and then press delete on your keyboard. Okay, it's no longer constrained to be vertical. We'll do the same thing over here. Hover over it, click on the vertical constraint, hit delete on your keyboard. Now the vertical constraint's gone. And finally, this construction line has a horizontal constraint. And we'll delete that in the same way. And there we go. Now there's a problem. Since this is no longer constrained to be horizontal, and this and this are no longer constrained to be vertical, if we drag this point, we just end up moving the lines like that. So we'll hit Control Z do, or Command Z since I'm on a Mac. And, uh, and then we're going to go over here. We're going to add a perpendicular constraint. And one note about adding constraints, for those who don't know, um, you can either click two objects in your sketch and then click the constraint and it will apply them to the objects. Or if you want to apply the same constraint to multiple objects, which we do, you can go up here without any objects selected, click on a constraint like perpendicular, there we go, and now click on pairs of objects and it will just automatically apply it but it will keep you in perpendicular mode so that you can apply that to other objects. So by clicking on those two, we just added a perpendicular constraint between those two lines. And now we're going to go do the same thing over here. And there we go. And now we're done. And now let's hit escape to back out of that. If we hover over this, you can see now right there that perpendicular constraint that we just added. 
And so now, if we go and drag this line, we're back to having an isosceles trapezoid. But we can go hit dimension and set the angle between this line and the base plane to, let's say, 80 degrees. And there we go. It rotated accordingly, and it's still constrained to be an isosceles trapezoid. So which one of those you'll use, uh, wh whether you just leave the horizontal and vertical constraints in or whether you add the perpendicular constraints instead, will depend on whether your trapezoid needs to be horizontal or vertical to the base plane or some other reference geometry, or whether you need it to be at some other sort of custom angle. Um, and one final note, uh, someone else on the Reddit post suggested uh, this common way, and I'll leave it here for those who want a simpler way to build a trapezoid when you know what the angles need to be between these lines. Uh, if we knew what the angles needed to be between here and here, then there's a much simpler way to do this. We could go over here and sketch, and we'll do another vertical line, and we'll just draw this all as one right now. We'll do something like that. And then we'll go over here, close it out. I'm going to hit escape to back out of that. And now we'll go back to dimension, but this time we'll click on this line and this line. And note that we needed to draw them so that the lines are at kind of this uh, here. I'm going to hit escape to back out real quick. Uh, we needed to draw this so that this line is not horizontal, otherwise it would have gotten an implicit horizontal constraint and we wouldn't be able to do this. But since we drew it down at an angle, we can do this. We'll hit dimension, we'll click on those two lines, and there we go. We'll move this over here. We'll type uh, 70 degrees, and then we'll do the same thing right here. There we go, 70. Forgive the dimensions being overlapping. And now we'll hit escape to back out of that, and now this is an isosceles trapezoid as well. But with the angles hard-coded to be 70 degrees. So if we knew that that's what we wanted the angles to be, perfect. We can do that for both those corners, and there we go. But if we don't want know what those angles are going to be, or if uh, we wanted to allow them to become whatever they would given other constraints in the sketch geometry, like let's say we wanted this to be an inch off the base plane, and this to be two inches off the base plane, and these to be three inches apart, and whatever angle was needed to do that, we wanted it to do that. Uh, then we would use this approach over here and not set fixed angles here, but use the construction line and this midpoint constraints and the uh, parallel constraints or the vertical and horizontal constraints we get by default. So there we go, that's it. Uh, let me know in the comments if this uh, helped you or if you have any other questions. And uh, thanks for watching.